Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to come tell you a few things that I learned about the CBS report about the red heifers and the altar that they showed, that I showed in a prior video that had the priest standing on the ramp. Well, there was some errors in the CBS report, apparently. And so, um, the Temple Institute is in charge of the Red Heifer Project, and the CEO of the Temple Institute, Israel Ariel, it's his son, Azaria Ariel, that um, is overseeing the Red Heifer Project. And so he came on um, Israel 365 News and gave a report about how CBS wrongfully stated certain things about the red heifer ceremony and about the ramp and everything. So I'm just gonna give you the highlights of what he said so that this will update you about what that ramp was and some facts about the red heifer ceremony. The ramp with the altar that you saw that CBS showed is a model of the altar as it stood in the temple. The real altar must be made of stone, and the model is located in Mitzpah Jericho, which is Jericho, and is used for temple service reenactments and educational purposes. It is not made of stone and cannot be used for the temple service. The red heifer is not burned on an altar, it is burned on a pyre of wood, and it may only be burned on the Mount of Olives. The ritual burning of the red heifer must be carried out on the Mount of Olives on a plot of land that Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo legally purchased many years ago. The Jewish law requires bringing public time-bound sacrifices, even if we are ritually impure, he said. According to Jewish law, he said, we are deficient in our ritual obligations if we do not bring these sacrifices. This does not require a temple structure. It requires a stone altar, essentially a pile of rocks that can be constructed in 10 minutes and removed in even less time. Now, one time I saw that they were taking rocks from, um, I can't think about where it was, the Jordan River, I think. I don't know. They took rocks out of the body of water that kind of cleansed and purified them, and they were using that for the altar. So this is where I believe the rocks come from, is out of the uh, Jordan River, perhaps, and that was something I saw a long time ago. So, the animal must be two years and one month old. No blemish, no holes in the ear. The Messiah is something separate. It is written in the Torah so we know that it will come. And Jews believe that we can hasten the inevitable arrival of the Messiah by serving God and performing biblical commandments, such as praying and keeping Sabbath. The red heifer is simply one of those commandments. Building the temple does not depend on the red heifers, he said. Entering the Holy of Holies will be forbidden even after the red heifer is prepared. First of all, the temple is a gift of peace to the world. Well, it's not going to bring peace, I can tell you that. Only the Prince of Peace will bring peace. It's a house of prayer for all nations, Rabbi Ariel said. And of course, the Scarlet Harlot, all the mystery Babylonian religions will come there into that house of prayer for all nations. Um, when they have the one world religion there in Jerusalem with the Sanhedrin at the helm with their king at the helm. And then he says, reinstating the temple service in its entirety is dependent on the return of the red heifer ritual. The ashes of the red heifer are prepared outside of the temple, and this is not a sacrifice per se, so it is burned on the Mount of Olives. 
the ashes are collected. A tiny bit of the ashes are mixed with some of the spring water and can be sprinkled on people to purify them. Lacking a red heifer has left all of Israel ritually impure and unable to properly perform many other commandments. Rabbi Ariel is supervising the effort to reestablish this essential Torah commandment. And as I told you, there's a mystery about, you know, what this red heifer is all about. And I figured it out by the grace of the Holy Spirit. And that was this, that when you have, um, there's a certain youthful period of time where the animal is called a calf. And then it's bumped up to being a cow. So I was astonished when the Holy Spirit helped me to see in the scriptures where it's talking about that there was a woman in the wilderness riding a scarlet-colored beast. And I had never understood what all of that meant until the other day when I realized that the golden calf was really a red heifer overlaid in the gold of the Egyptians that they had taken out of Egypt. So they took a red heifer, the scarlet colored beast, and they overlaid it with gold. And then they were dancing around, worshiping it. They probably climbed on it like we saw in the 10 commandments movie. There was a woman that got on top of it and was riding the beast. So they were it. And I actually had found a quote from um, Lubitscher Rebbe Vichy in 1940 that said, the red heifer ceremony is an atonement for the golden calf incident. So there you go. Um, it is absolutely stunning to realize this and that she was the scarlet harlot riding the scarlet colored beast in the wilderness and disobeying God and rejected the laws that Moses had brought down. So Moses had to go up for a second set and then all of those people perished and died. So if you think that everybody's gonna just be all copacetic and go right on into heaven that's in Israel with this ceremony that's never going to purify them and take away their sins or anything else, you're sadly mistaken. There were a lot of um, Hebrews that, you know, they, they came all the way from the wilderness to enter the promised land and they were unable to because they, you know, were doing things that in disbelief. And, you know, Moses did not enter the promised land. So not everyone's going into the promised land which is going through the Messiah, King Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, and by his blood atonement for our sins that purifies us once and for all with the living blood of the mighty God in whose image we are made. So um, I just wanted to clarify these things that that was just a model ramp altar and is not what they're going to use for the red heifer. They're going to assemble a little wood pyre up there and burn the red heifer up there after they um, kill it, basically. So anyway, I wanted you to know the truth about this and some of the other facts from the actual mouth of the rabbi that's supervising the situation up there. So time will tell what happens with the king, the Messiah, that they sit upon the throne of Judah. And, you know, if he's going to actually be there during this ceremony, it's actually something that they hope to include the whole world in. Because they think that the temple is going to bring peace to the world. And that's absolutely not what the New Testament reveals. <laughs>
So anyway, I just wanted to bring this to you and thank you for blessing me. Thank you for um, everything. Just keep looking up, keep trusting and believing that our King is coming. So I just wanted to clarify what is actually happening and what to expect with the sacrificial red heifer. And of course, um, anybody new coming to my channel doesn't know that I talked all about the red heifer and that Jesus fulfilled it all and all of that. So I'll get somebody that won't have watched anything and so they don't know that I'm standing for the rapture. They don't know that, you know, um, half of what I believe or think. <laughs> so anyway, I just need to clarify it all. Um, time will tell what's going to happen. We've got lots of things happening and lots of things to keep an eye on. We've got about three weeks until Passover night. So time will tell and we'll see what happens. So hang in there, guys. Love and blessings to everyone. I'll see you in the next video.